represent the south side. Let's get it, man. Represent the south side. Ride shotgun on my nigga Cajun on the beat. Under the rank one act, nigga. Ain't shot street. Wow, wow. Let's take it down these motherfuckers. Wayne and T. I'm here with my man GLC. What's happening, Wayne? How's it going, GL? Um, first of all, um, you made your debut on the college dropout album on the song Spaceship. Now, the thing about that verse that you dropped, it was such a heartfelt verse, and I think what drove a lot of people into it was the voice, the voice and the delivery. Um, let's, let's talk about that. Well, uh, man, the voice. The voice is uh, something that I accredit uh, God for blessing me with. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. Uh, and I came out with my mama, so I'm quite sure she had something to do with it. My old man, you know, they genetics, whatever. Uh, you know, put it together. And, uh, man, here I was. And as I grew over time, I remember like being in high school and I had a teacher, her name was Ms. LeVert. And in my uh, computer science class, I would think I would be whispering because I'd be like bored. So I'd be talking to the girls in school and this and that. And she would always hear everything I would say when I, even when I thought I was whispering because she was like, man, you just get this voice. Your voice just carries. It's like you have to like just do your work. Your voice carries. She's like, I don't know if you should be in computer science class. You probably should be doing like TV or radio because you have one of those voices. And back then I was like, what she talking about, you know what I'm saying? I knew I wanted to rap, but I was like, what she talking about? And then as I uh, began to like perform and uh, perfect my craft, that was one of the main things that, like, see, see the thing is, it's like, whenever I get on any record, people uh -huh. never confuse me for anybody else. They be like, oh, that's GLC. Exercise your G. Exercise your G. Love I mean, that record. No, I, um, that's, a, that's a hectic track, correct? Yeah, that's a hectic soprano He's out of uh, Fresno, California. Yeah. Now, now the flow on exercise your G is is very dominating, yeah. and I mean, like we spoke of earlier, you always establish your presence with that voice. I mean, yeah. that very distinctive voice and the flow on exercise your G. That was just that was that was my first time hearing you come hard like that. What about um, spaceship? Shot stay the line. Get blinded by the light. It's kind of morbid. Smoother, laid back flow. Yeah. Um, exercise your G. That's that's a track that's that's like what you listen to before football game. I don't know if you ever play high school sports or anything, but yeah. um, the FBL music, Exercise your G, is that kind of song. Right? Yeah, thank you. How, how, how did that record come about? I I was on a tour again with my man uh, Big T, and he was a part of the mob from out west called. Uh, Jeez. And I was in a mob called uh, the Jeez. And that's you, you know, we'll be short. And that's something that we used to say as kids. He kind of like reinstated that into my mind. Like, man, what's up, G? Man, exercise your Jeep. You know, that's like I ain't be every time he saw me. So I'd be like, I can't believe this fool said exercise your G. So every time we see each other, it was just like exercise your G, exercise your G. That's just something that you did. When you exercise your G, you're exercising your gangster, you're exercising your genius, so you're exercising your growth. And when you exercise your growth, it's like you can exercise your growth when it comes to backing, when it comes to getting money, when it comes to uh, business in any sense of the word, when it comes to uh, whatever it is you're doing in life. If you exercise your growth, if you exercise your machine, your gangster, your genius, you can win and you can overcome. And you know, as I said, like that that's that story, the story and exercise that she that, that, that I'm telling is a story of a, of a man, a man from a boy. Like like you gotta get up your way and exercise your G like how um, I, I talked about like how my nephews needed shoes and I did what I had to do in order to like get them shoes on their feet. I talked about um, how we looked at uh, certain things that were considered illegal or wrong to make something good come from it, like in our neighborhood, because it's all that we were exposed to. So this is what we had to do, you know what I'm saying? And we overcame obstacles by using the negative things that were around us. And, and although what we were doing in some aspects, and as an older man, I would say, okay, it had a little bit of negative connotation to it. But uh, man, the 
outcome and the result and, and, and the reason for us doing what we was doing was always positive. It wasn't to like hurt nobody, it was aimed just to put food up on the table and get them enjoy it, so uh, you know, how to look back in After you hit us with Rob Slow, um, you then dropped a couple of mixtapes which had a couple of songs with Rob on there that, in my opinion, were absolutely bananas. Um, oh man, thank well, you. Well, the bl Blinded by the Light, the stamp on that, that that's that's a crazy stamp. Let's talk about that record. That blind by the light. Oh man, that record is. Uh, I, I was inspired to do that record because the movie Glow was one of my favorite movies, and that was one of the most memorable uh, records that was played uh, during the score of the movie. Okay. And I don't think it was like at one hour or two minutes into the movie when all the pictures started flashing and this and that. And I really uh, grasped the concept of being blind about the light, how George Young was getting all that money. And like, it was like, man, one thing led to this, next thing led to this, and it was just a growth process. And it was kind of like saying, man, as you continue to grow, don't get blinded by the light, or you can't be blinded by the light. So, when the uh, sample and the uh, beat was submitted to me by uh, this producer by the name of Day Day, who was a part of a production team by the name of uh, Trail Blazers in DC. They based right over, uh, well, from the west side, where Day Day lives in uh, Hyde Park in the hundreds. They like all over, but they come together and they make this, man, they some remarkable young guys, man, they really doing their thing. So he brought me a beat, and I was just thinking like, hmm, this is a pretty dope beat. So then, you know, all I did was just implement, you know, some real life stuff, some real life stories. Just told a story about a young lady who, you know, she saw me, she saw my Jesus chain, she saw my angel wing, she saw my Rolex, she saw me with money and this and that, and she got intrigued, you know, and it seemed like that she, when she saw all that, I think that's when she became blind by the light. But she wasn't really sure of like what level I could really take this Mac into. So what I did was I flew on a plane, I flew out to Cali. I could have flew to LAX, but I flew to Burbank, which is a more, it costs a little bit more to fly to Burbank because it's a smaller airport, Bob Boats Airport actually. I flew out there, I showed her a really good time, exposed her to different things. And I just told her like different parts about my life, like about my friends, like well, no matter how far I come up, I never get blinded by the light, I'm gonna continue to grow and just hopefully don't get blinded by the light, baby. But this is me and this is who I am. So it was kind of like, um, uh, and allure, like I was able to lure her in through my material thing, but then she got to be lured, in, the lure, uh, lured into the uh, personality of who the man really was. So is this song an auto, is this an autobiographical song? Yeah, it is, it definitely is. It's, uh, like all my records, they all uh, entail or depict different parts of my life, you know what I'm saying? That's what makes my records so easy to do and, and so intriguing because you believe it. Because it ain't no fantasy rap. Like, although I do be like flying on private jets and you know traveling the world and this and that, my whole get up ain't about that. Because I still go through different things like having to pay uh, bills. You know what I'm saying? Still having to put food in the refrigerator and stuff like that. So, man, the real life issues affect GLC just like they affect each and every man. I think that's one of the qualities that makes you so relatable. To the, uh, to the really some things. Uh, I, I've been around, man. I've seen the world. I've been exposed. And I lived my life, and man, like different from different ages of my life. I live my life different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've always gathered, gathered and uh, applied knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Like, that's something that I've always grasped onto. So if ever I'm in a position to spread that knowledge or that wealth. Because a lot of us want to be rich financially, but once you're rich in knowledge, you don't anything else to come, come behind that. You know what I'm saying? As long as you apply it. Right?